Virginia Bruce and Richard Waugh. Playing with me. 
torturing me like a cat with a mouse. Warden Graves, I didn't even have a phone. I've always been afraid to be listed in the phone book. And the only way up to that penthouse was by that one elevator. I was trapped up there, at his mercy whenever he wanted to come. What did you do? I spent the night, crouched against the wall with a flat iron in my hand, waiting for that to click in my lock. And uh, the next morning? The next day, I began to wonder if it all wasn't just a dream. Never to discuss any of our prisoners over the telephone. 
That's what they say. So you came all the way out here in person? Yes. And now you wish me to send someone to apprehend this man? I want you to bring him back, that's all. Back where he belongs. Miss Rhodes, Tom Nixon doesn't need to be brought back. He's here. Oh, no, Warden Graves, please. I- I've seen him with my own eyes. Talk to him face to face. Maybe there's someone here calling himself Tom Nixon. But he's escaped. He's free. I know it. Will you just step this way with me, Miss Rhodes? No, no, I, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see his cell or talk to anybody. Or... Tom Nixon's dead, Miss Rhodes. He's buried in the prison yard. I'd like you to see his grave. <laughs> And this is a photograph taken of him just a week before he died. You'll see he wasted away quite a bit. He was in the infirmary all last year. He became very religious, too, toward the end. Spent a good deal of his time praying. Praying? Mm hmm. All the fights seemed to go out of him as soon as he knew he was seriously ill. But uh, you'd say this was his picture, wouldn't you, Miss Rose? Yes. It's Tom, all right. Mm-hmm. And these little personal belongings. Ordinarily, we turn these over to the family, but in Tom's case, well, there wasn't uh, uh, much family. You'd uh, recognize these as his? Yes. I don't know them all, but... That gold watch. He used to wear it every Sunday at long. He wrote a couple of notes before he died to a fellow prisoner and to the prison chaplain. You remember this handwriting? Yes. It seems to be it. <clears throat> Well, Miss Rose, now, you feel a little better about your elevator operator? You must think me a fool. No. An awful not, fool. Not at all, not at all. But the lighting was so distorted. It was almost like seeing a ghost. A ghost? <laughs> come, come, Miss Rose. Snap out of it. Now that you've gotten all this off your chest, isn't it perfectly obvious that that poor night man's done nothing or said nothing to you at all out of the ordinary? It's only that... The well, you seem to be the victim of some kind of uh, guilt complex. Guilt complex? Oh, I'm not guilty of anything. Oh, what I mean is, Tom has been on your mind now for ten years. You testified against him. He threatened you gradually. You see him everywhere. No, no, only this once. Only these, these last few nights. All right. But now you know the truth. That should clear your fears forever. Tom's dead and buried. Now, go back and take a look at that night man again. Now that you know Tom's dead, I'll lay odds. The whole resemblance will vanish. Well, I hope so. My advice to you, Miss Rose, would be to go straight home. Use that elevator as much as possible. Get acquainted with this foley fellow. For your own sake, try to get the better of these hallucinations. Otherwise, you'll start seeing poor Tom everywhere you turn. Well, I'll try, Warden Gray. Well, thank you. You've been very kind. Not at all. Charles. Evening, ma'am. I have some bags here, Charles. Will you help me with them, please? Okay. That all, ma'am? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is for you, Charles. No, thanks, ma'am. I, uh, never take it. It's all right. I, I'd like you to have it. I'm sure the superintendent wouldn't mind. The superintendent hasn't anything to do with it. <laughs> Well, aren't we going to start? Yeah, in a minute. Been out of town? Why, why, yes, I have. Gone quite a while. I didn't see you for three or four nights. I was in the country, visiting a friend. Oh. Why, it's beautiful weather out there. The leaves are beautiful. I wouldn't know. You live in the city, Charles? Of course. Oh, isn't it hard to bring up children in the city? Children? Yes. Uh, didn't I understand Gallagher to say you had two children? Me? What chance I have to have any children? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a bachelor. By the way, my name is not Charles. Well, guess this must be my floor. No, it's not. Then why are we stopping? The elevator's stuck. Power's been cut off. How could that happen? It's it never happened before, as long as I've lived here. Yeah. Well, sooner or later, I guess it had to happen. Is there some way we can get it back on? Some buzzer for the cellar or something? The power's off. The buzzer isn't working. No wonder the lights are still on. The, the lights? Yeah. They'll go out in a few minutes, though. 
And it'll be black in here. Black as a grave. <gasps> Miss, Miss, get out of here. Open the door. Can't. She won't budge. But you haven't even tried. I don't have to try. We're stuck between floors. The door's flush with a solid wall. Solid wall? Yeah. The kind of bricked up in a cell. But there must be some way out of here. Some Isn't there a little door in the roof? Something you can pry open? Something you can climb up out of into the shaft? I don't see any. Oh, but there must be. Climb up and, and feel around before the light gives out. There's nothing to get hold of. Nothing but steel and mirrors. And I'm not tall enough. Stand on my bed. That's a good idea. You'll never hold me. Oh, it's all right. Just hurry. Here. The bad's done strongest. No, never make it. Well, but stand on your tiptoe. Stretch. No. Let me try. downstairs and finds the elevator stuck and then rings up the superintendent. That might be ours. Sure. No! Help! 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 You're wasting your time. Oh. Everybody's left the building. I know because they've all signed out. This air shaft's thick, isolated. Nobody's down in the basement. And there won't be any passengers ringing for an elevator this time of night. You seem awfully sure about all that. Why not? Cigarette? No, thanks. Do you think it's safe to smoke in here? Sure. And supposing it isn't. What's the difference? <laughs> yeah, have one. It'll suit your nerves. No, thanks. The air is so close. Jumpy, ain't you? No. So it's really dead. Nothing to be afraid of. Sooner or later, they'll come. Oh, sure. Eventually. Just that this waiting. All these mirrors. And being stuck. You're not jumpy on account of me? You? Oh, no, no, of, of course not. But you were kind of jumpy with me the other night, weren't you? The other night? When I came into your apartment unexpectedly. Oh, oh, that, that was a mistake. A mistake? Yes, I, I just thought you were someone else. A friend of mine. Someone I've always been afraid of. Oh. But now I've learned it couldn't be you because his friend's dead. Dead and buried. Mom. 
can get out here, or I'll take you back up to the penthouse as soon as we picked up the other passenger. What? What? The, the lobby? You brought me down to the lobby? Yes. Then, you're not... Tom? No. You're, you're not going to... You're not going to kill me? I, I'm free? Yes. Then it was all just a crazy illusion. <laughs> a nightmare because the power went off. And you look so much like Tom Nixon. <laughs> oh, forgive me. Please forgive me for being so stupid. Okay. <laughs> and you'll forget about those silly things I said, won't you? I, I didn't mean them. It's paper. I, I was beside myself. What silly things? Those silly things about, about my mother and, and Tom. This is for you. No, no, I, I insist this time. I insist. I'm sorry, Mum. But I'm afraid I never accept it. Oh, but you, you must. Particularly from people who framed my twin brother. Good evening, Warden Graves. Good evening, Lieutenant Nixon. Well done. So closes The Nightman, starring Virginia Bruce and Richard Wolf. Tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spears.